where we bring science to you at home. We make science available and accessible for everyone. Our lessons are always so fun because every week we provide the children with new, exciting experiments for them to do at home. This way, they're able to learn and even open up their minds to the new ideas that they're being taught and introduced to. this week we have little people we got these from powerland and um what we want to do is see how many different organs within the human body uh -huh. we are able to name okay. and place in the correct place, place okay. in the human body and we're going against each other to see <laughs> who knows more of the human body you can do this by literally just drawing a man on a piece of paper and then getting some pens and trying to quiz yourself. Do you know where our different organs are in the body? Okay. This is mine. I and think I can get some bonus points for trying to draw it. <laughs> oh my gosh, I forgot the most important thing. <laughs> so, we have brain. Yep. Yeah. I put eyes. Okay, cool, that's fine. Um, lungs. Yeah. I put heart. I, I forgot. <laughs> um, liver. Yeah, high up. Which side is your liver on? <laughs> I put spleen. Okay, I didn't put spleen. Then I put small intestine, large intestine. So I put mine all the other way around. Okay. And then we had, I had the kidneys. Your kidneys are quite high up. Oh, what the, I put the blood. Oh. Kidneys. Yeah, kidneys there. And then bladder. The bladder should be there. And I forgot to put that there. So this is a very constipated, dead dog. Got skin. Oh, yeah, but... We both have got skin. But that'll be everywhere. Yeah. So, so test tomorrow. yourself <laughs> and see how many you get right. Yeah. Okay. Today, all our experiments will be focused on the human body. Um, so our bodies are amazing. Mm, it's Machineries, it's, it's they can do so much. A lot. All of the different parts of our body are responsible for keeping us alive and mm. they all play such a unique role. And without them, we wouldn't be able to do the At things all. we can do, which is just so amazing. Um, so some just interesting facts that we think are interesting. Um, 15 percent of our body weight is made up of our skin mm. so the skin is actually the largest organ and none of us wrote that on our sheet yeah <laughs> well, that is actually the largest organ and our skin helps us it protects us it acts as a barrier mm -hmm. it's able to heal so also um your ears and your nose it never stops growing so even as you grow old and old, like your ears and nose will just always keep growing. Really? And yeah, they never stop. But your hearing gets worse. But your hearing gets worse as you get older. <laughs> as you get older, who <laughs> knew? <laughs> Um, we have so we have different organs and mm -hmm. we actually have two kidneys and kidneys help with filtration and they help with getting rid of toxins and okay. um, so they're connected to the bladder but we only actually need one kidney to live oh. so some people are able to donate their kidneys yeah. if someone in your family becomes unwell some people have been able to donate one of their kidneys so what's interesting is genetically 
all humans are 99% identical. Wow. So genetically, when you look at our DNA, more or less identical. Crazy. Which is interesting. That's why we love everyone. Yes. <laughs> basically the same. Experiment number one. The brain. The brain. So we're so thankful that we have brains. Yeah. Our brains are literally the powerhouse. They actually help us do everything mm -hmm. from speaking from speaking to hearing to seeing to smelling anything it's all to do with our brain yeah so because our brain is literally our powerhouse it actually requires 20 percent of all the oxygen that the blood pumps around the body mm. so it needs a lot of oxygen because it's just doing so much yeah. work um because the brain is such a vital organ it only be without blood for around eight to ten seconds yeah. Um, otherwise you just totally lose consciousness and also it can not go without oxygen so if it doesn't have a supply of oxygen between five and six minutes then you just die that's so so the brain we literally need it for we everything it. like as much as we say your heart your lungs yeah, literally anything is to do with your brain very important but we can't function yeah yeah so for this next experiment, you just need a lovely cauliflower. This is going to represent our lovely brains. And then you need um, five different food colorings. Mm -hmm. As you know by now, <laughs> food coloring is your best friend <laughs> because it helps us visualize everything. But the good thing is you never need a lot. So once you buy your one supply of food coloring, it should be able to last you a very oh, a long, long time. time. Pipettes. So we have five different pipettes for our five different colors that our brain is needed to be able to really function and different parts of the brain are responsible for different things mm -hmm. so we're just going to look at the parts of the brain that are responsible for our five senses so does everybody know what our five senses are yes they are okay so you can get your red and the back of our brain represents vision so we're going to color this in red so we know and this is literally just food coloring and we have a paintbrush to just help us spread the food coloring now if we move to this part here is um this part of the brain helps with our hearing so we're going to color this in green to represent our hearing green is for hearing then what is another one of our senses it is smelling so for our sense of smell i'm going to use blue. we have the back of our brain we have the side and right at the front we have what do we use for our what did i say smell so, cover it with blue. Um, the blue is for our smell. The red was for our vision and the green was for our hearing. So, the other senses left is we still need taste and we still need touch. Now, let me bring it to look more like this. So, in this area here so more so not quite here at the side here is what is responsible for taste this area here so we're going to get some yellow and see how that works out so yellow is for our taste yep and then our touch is right at the top and for that we are going to use pink so your touch and your taste are still in the same section of your brain so if you think the front the side and the back your touch and your taste are all on top but just to show you we're just going to do a different color so this is more of a pinky color like this so we have vision we have hearing, we have 
taste, we have touch and we have smell. And here at the back is what we call the cerebellum and this helps us with our balance and our muscle movement. And those are the different parts of our brain using a cauliflower. Number two. So this experiment is all to do with the heart. Mm -hmm. So the heart is a muscular organ and it helps to pump blood around the body. Yeah. And we need blood around our body because blood helps to carry oxygen exactly. as well as other things around to different parts of our yeah. body. And our different organs need oxygen to be able to do the functions that they do. Yeah. So the heart is broken up into four different chambers. So we have the left atrium and the left ventricle and we have the right atrium and the right ventricle. So on a lot of diagrams, you have to remember that um, when you look at it, yeah. it may look like it's on the opposite side uh -huh. because we're facing it. facing it, but really it's of our heart yeah. inside. So, so what we have is we have the four different chambers and what happens is blood can enter the right atrium mm -hmm. and then it contracts and then goes into the right ventricle and then this blood is then sent to the lungs yeah. to then become oxygenated. oxygenated so it gets oxygen from the lungs mm -hmm. then this blood that comes from the lungs now with oxygen enters back into the heart but this time it's on the yes. left side so it goes from the left atrium to the left ventricle and then this blood is pumped to the rest yeah. of our body with oxygen in it and then you get the cycle again what the heart really relies on is the fact that the blood can only flow in one direction yeah. so once the blood goes for example from the right atrium to the right ventricle once it's in the right ventricle, it cannot flow backwards. It can't mm -hmm. flow back up into the right atrium. It would have to go through the whole cycle yeah. for the blood to come back into our right atrium. Yeah. So what stops this is called valves. So they act as doors and they only let you in one, one way. way. So it's like a one-way system. And if you're trying to get back through the other way, it's like, stop, bye-bye. <laughs> you can't get through. We're going to shut our door. And that really helps. So these are valves. Yeah. So with our next experiment, we're just going to focus on one chamber just mm -hmm. to show you how um, the heart pumps and goes from one chamber to another. Yep. Okay, so for this experiment, you just need scissors. You need plastic straws. Balloons. Um, red food colouring, that's just to represent the blood, but you can just use water and then you can have um, two jars. If you only have one jar, that's perfectly fine, but just have something that can capture the liquid. So the first step is we want to fill one of the jars with water and probably three quarters of the way up. So you can pour few drops of red food colouring and that is just so it's like blood. A balloon and we need to cut the lip of the balloon. I'm going to use this one because it seems a bit stretchier okay. um, and then we're just going to cut. Don't throw this away because we're going to be using this bit. So Jess can you just help me by stretching sure. this over that? can be quite fiddly. So, take two. <laughs> Just poke a little hole into the one. So it should come through the other side. The straw through that hole on one side. And then on the other side, we're gonna do exactly the same. Poke a hole. Don't worry if your straws cross over, some will naturally just want to cross over to each other. And then using the piece of 
the balloon that you cut off, we just want you to glue it round one of the straws. Ah, oh, we have it ready. Mm -hmm. So what I want you to do, Jess, is to just press down on it okay. and then um, you will see what happens. And so what happens, so your heart's beating, the blood is pumping out. So, if we say that this represents our right atrium, so what we can see is that the blood will flow into, when there's a beat, the heart contracts and the blood will flow into our right ventricle. And when the blood is in our right ventricle, it cannot flow back up into our right atrium and this is the job of the valve. So you can see that the water is not coming or the blood is not coming back up through our valve, but it's just allowed to only flow and come out one way. Okay, so this next experiment is all about our lungs. Um, we've learned that the lungs play a very important role um, as they're able to oxygenate our blood. Mm -hmm. So they're able to put oxygen within our blood and we need oxygen to, to, do, everything. to do everything. All our organs mm -hmm. need oxygen. Um, so we need it to yeah. be able to breathe. Our lungs help us to breathe and to function. Yeah. So for this experiment, you can either print out pictures of lungs or um, you can have a go at drawing them. Um, so for this experiment, what you need is straws. You need two balloons, so you need pencils, a piece of paper and some scissors. Scissors and tape. So the first step, we just want you to draw your nose, your mouth and your lungs. Sorry. We want you to cut it out. Okay, so once you cut it all out, put your rubbish to one side and then um, what we want you to do is to get your two straws and first of all just tape them together. So get a piece of tape and just tape your two straws. Once you've taped your two straws together, now we want you to add your nose at the top and then add your lips. Again with sellotape, once you've done the lips, then we want you to then at the bottom tape your lungs behind, your two lungs behind. So bend your two straws one one way, one the other way. And then with your balloon, we want you to wrap one balloon on one side and the other balloon on the other side with sellotape. So then when you have your two, you should be able to blow into them and they should blow up. And these are meant to represent our lanzas. Experiment number four. four. So this one is all about the stomach. You may have seen that on our pictures, we did not draw the, the stomach, stomach, which is so important. So We're always so eating. Exactly. <laughs> the stomach has such an important job mm -hmm. of being able to break down our food. Yeah. And the process of breaking down food um, so that it can be absorbed by the body is called digestion. So our stomachs enable us to do that. Just one interesting fact about the stomach. So obviously everyone knows that, you know, especially when you're hungry, you can hear your stomach growling and making noise. And this is actually not just when you're hungry, but your stomach growls all the time. Mm. But it's especially loud when you're hungry because there's no food um, in your belly and to like muffle the sound really. Wow, that's yeah. interesting. So yeah. you're growling. So you're growling. <laughs> so for this experiment you need Ziploc sandwich bags, mm -hmm. you need some um, 
fizzy soda, fizzy drink. Um, but ideally, it should be clear. Okay. And then you need crackers. We have Brits, but you can use crackers, any form of cracker type biscuit. And then you need a marker pen. And that is all you need for this experiment. Okay, so step one, we want you to draw a picture of a stomach on your sandwich bags. Cool. Okay. Add a uh, cracker into your stomach. Okay. So add a couple crackers. And put it into your stomach. Crackers in your it is the stomach has two ways of breaking down and processing food. Mm -hmm. So the first one is physical. So what the stomach does is churns and moves around the food. So it physically breaks it up. Okay. So the first thing we want you to do is just with your hands crush the biscuits because this is what your stomach will do at first. And right. The step is in our stomachs, so once it's physically tried to break it down, what it then does is we have acids in, yeah. we have chemicals in our stomach mm -hmm. in the form of acids and we have enzymes um, that help to break down our food. So the acid that we, that is most commonly found in our stomach is hydrochloric acid and this helps to further break mm -hmm. down and process our food. So for this, we just want you, our acid is being represented by this soda. So we just want you to pour a bit of acid into your sandwich bags. And this is the second way in which our food is processed in our stomach. We're able to absorb all the nutrients that we're mm -hmm. meant to get out of this. And then it's able to go to the parts of our body that need it. We're mm -hmm. able to get the nutrition then anything else can be discharged as waste. Yeah. So we hope you enjoyed our different experiments. Uh, yeah. Remember, if you've done any of the experiments, share it with us. Mm -hmm. send, us um, pictures. send us pictures. And we will see you again next, next week. week. Take see care. Ya. Stay safe. Stay safe. Bye. Bye.